Hello, have you ever wanted to swim in your pool and you dip a toe and you go, ooh, that's ice cold? Well, if so, then a solar pool heater might be for you. Solar is the lowest cost way to heat a pool because there's zero energy cost. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how solar pool heaters work, how much heat and swim season, months with solar, solar pool heating costs, and solar pool heater frequently asked questions. So let's get to it. So first I must explain there's different types of solar panels. There's solar PV, also known as solar electric. These panels, sun shines on the solar panel and it produces electric for the home. Then on the top right, we have a solar pool heater. Solar pool heater panels, they're black plastic. They got tubes inside and water flows through the tubes. The plastic is sitting in the sun and it gets hot and it transfers that heat to the water. That's a solar pool heater panel. And then on the bottom right, we have a solar hot water panel that has copper tubes inside with a glass top and that heats water for domestic hot water. Things like dishes, laundry, showers, that sort of thing. We cover all three of these in our channel, but in this case, we're just gonna handle the solar pool heater panel. Now there's different styles of solar pool heater panels. Just know they all have tubes inside. Some have individual tubes. Some have tubes that are webbed together. And some are a mat type panel with oval shaped tubes inside. They all work the same mechanically, but there are some performance differences and some warranty differences. But I'll talk about that in a different video. So here's a diagram of a solar pool heating system. But before I get into this, I've already showed you the solar panels, but on the top left here, we have a solar controller or a thermostat. Let me talk about that and then we'll come back to this diagram. So the two most common solar controllers are the Hayward AquaSolar and the Pentair Solar Touch. Basically, these are a thermostat, just like you have a thermostat for your air conditioner. You set it for your desired temperature. So in the case of the Hayward, it has a knob you turn to the desired temperature. This box will then tell a valve to open up or close to control the solar pool heating system. The Pentair does the same thing, but it's a digital display and it also tells you the temperature of the pool. So the same, one just happens to be digital. Your pump needs to be on during the warmest parts of the day. So normally like nine to five or 10 to four in the winter is fine, but you want it on because it's gonna use the pool pump to pump water. Anyways, what's gonna happen is you set this box for 85 degrees. This box is gonna compare the pool temperature, in this case, 80 degrees. And it says, okay, we want 85. What's the temperature of the roof? Oh, the roof is 90 degrees. As long as this roof is at least four degrees warmer than the pool, then the Pentair will tell a valve to automatically open up. It's gonna send water up to the bottom of the solar panels. Hot water rises. It's gonna go out the top and return back to the pool. It's gonna keep on circulating this water until either A, we reach our desired temperature of 85 in this case, or it's starting to cool off because like the sun is setting. So, in that case, the Pentair box will automatically close that valve and uh, keep checking uh, for more heat. If it's cool the rest of the day, then it's just gonna stay off. Now, uh, the next day, the pump is gonna come on. Again, the Pentair box is gonna check and see what the pool temperature is versus what your target temperature is. And if it can add heat, it's going to repeat this process. It's going to send water up to the bottom of the solar panels, hot water goes out the top and return back down to the pool. Now, one thing to note is the Pentair, it compares the pool with the rooftop. You have to be calling for heat and the roof must be at least four degrees warmer than the pool. The reason for this is if you send water up to solar panels, and there's not at least four degrees difference, you actually end up cooling off your pool and not heating it because you lose some heat just circulating that water around. So the, what's great about the Pentair is it knows when to open and close that valve precisely. So it's a set it and forget it. You just set for desired temperature, the Pentair box will take care of the rest. 
The same with the Hayward. Now you may be wondering, what is the side of the house plumbing? And is there any more pipes that need to be run to your pool? Do we need to dig anything? The answer to that is no, we do not need to do any of that. What we do is your filter has an out outlet. This outlet just normally returns back to your pool. So what we do is we tap into that outlet. It goes up to a, this on off valve. Um, if the solar is on, you'll see I got this blue arrow. It goes up the pipe to the solar system if it's on and then returns back down this other pipe with a red arrow and then back out to your pool. If it's off, it's just not gonna go up here. It's just gonna circulate and loop around and go back to your pool. So no digging, no additional pipes to your pool or anything like that. So you may be wondering, what is the temperature with solar? Okay, uh, the solar heat is dependent on seven days of weather. Keep in mind, we're heating between usually 8,000 to 15,000 gallons of water. So it is a gradual heat. It takes a while to heat up that much water. So, but over the course of a week, about 10 degrees. And so one thing I wanna explain a little bit is, people ask, what is my pool temperature with solar then? Well, again, it's accumulation of about a week's worth of weather. And keep in mind in my chart, this is a fall, fall week. And as you can see here, we had some days we were in the high 80s, some days we're in the low 80s, and some days we're in the low 70s. This is a bit extreme, but basically, um, even if it's 82 degrees, you might still have an 85 degree pool because, again, it's a week's worth of weather. But if it keeps on being cool in the following days, your pool's gonna gradually cool off. And when the weather heats up again, it's also, also going to warm up the pool as well. Okay. In this case, this is a bit extreme. We actually had a cold front come through and so it was particularly cold. And so it dropped the temperature a lot. Normally you don't get this sort of extreme, but I'm just trying to show you something here. Now here's the following days and you'll see, then we got back up to the mid eighties, but also notice that we do have a lot of fluctuation during the early AM hours. It's like 70 degrees. In the evening, it's about 72, and we got this high point, you know, roughly from about 11 to 2, then it's like in the 80s. This happens a lot in the fall months when you're trying to heat the pool. So one thing people often ask me is, well, how can I get more heat uh, with solar? So one way is to get more solar panels. More solar panels allows you to optimize that three-hour window to heat your pool. You could heat more water, heat it quicker, and therefore also have a longer swim season. The other thing is to consider getting a pool blanket. Whether you have a solar heater or a different type of heater, it's always recommended to get a pool blanket to help hold that heat in. Because what will happen is your pool is going to be heating up during the daytime, but at nighttime when it drops 10 degrees or sometimes even more, the pool is going to be just bleeding heat. You're going to be losing heat and also the water is going to evaporate. If you put a pool cover on it, you can add about another 10 degrees increase in pool temperature and also have to add less water to your pool. Now I do recommend to have these on a roller like I have here because they can be a bit bulky and hard to manage. Now, some of my customers might find it a bit cumbersome to handle a pool blanket like this or to bother with it. The other alternative I recommend is to try these solar rings they're sold at Amazon and some pool supply stores. These are like little plastic rafts. They just sit directly on the water. And they're not quite as good as a solar blanket, but they still do help hold some of that heat in. They have some gaps. But the advantage is if you just want to dip your feet in, you don't have to take off the whole thing. You could just toss aside a couple of these plastic uh, solar rings do your thing and then put the rings back. So it's a bit easier to manage, especially if you have kids and whatnot, a bit easier to manage, but not quite as efficient. So there's a trade off there. And I do have some customers that don't use a cover at all, but ideally, if you wanna get the most heat, it would be an advantage to have either a pool blanket or the solar rings, especially during the fall and spring months where the heating window is very small. 
So here's what a solar pool heater looks like installed. As you can see, they just look like black rectangles with black pipe. Very nice and aesthetically pleasing. And we can also do it on a tile roof, a metal roof. And we can also do commercial solar pool heating, such as condominiums and hotels, that sort of thing. So you may wonder, what is the cost of a solar pool heater system? Well, generally they run between 3,500 to 8,000. So just like a getting a kitchen remodel or getting a quote on a brand new pool, it's all custom to the home. And there's many factors. Of course, the bigger the pool, the more panels you need, the higher cost. Also the difficulty of install. So like this roof here, eh, the bottom part is a one story. And then I have an upper story with two more roof spaces. I have three roof faces and two stories to deal with. This is a very complex install, so it costs more money. So really, this is something that you really need to get a solar consultation on, on your particular pool and get a quote. Okay, so now I'm gonna handle some questions, but before I do, this is Solar by Green Greg. On this channel, I do solar advice, solar insider secrets, troubleshooting for homeowners, and solar efficiency. And by the way, I do stuff both on the computer and on site. If you found this video of value, hey, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. But don't go away because we're gonna answer some questions. Does the solar pool heater qualify for the federal tax credit? So this is the form 5695 and unfortunately the language says solar pool heating is not included in the tax credit. So uh, unfortunately that's the way the Congress wrote the bill. But solar pool heating is also the lowest cost item compared to solar electric. So it is what it is. You may wonder how long do they last and how long are they warrantied? So they last roughly between eight to 15 years, depending on the brand and the environment. And the warranties also vary a bit. Some are 10 years, some are 12 years, some are lifetime warranty. This again is something that should be discussed at a solar consultation. Does the pool pump need to be replaced for solar? So that's a great question. So uh, normally we can use your existing pump, but if you do have a single speed pump, I would recommend getting a variable speed pool pump, such as this Pentair. Variable speed means that this pump can be set for three different speeds and a quick clean cycle. So you can have a slow cycle when just filtering the pool, a higher cycle when you're trying to run solar or using a creepy crawly, and the slower speed when you're trying to go back to filtering again. So I do recommend a variable speed pool pump. These are made by Pentair, uh, Jandy makes them, and also Hayward makes them. They can save you roughly between $30 to $50 a month, depending on your local electric rates, because you set it for just the speed you need. But also, most importantly, working with solar and your other pool equipment, rather than just have one speed, you can actually set it for just the speed you need, and that gives you better performance for your solar and your pool. Is solar right for my rooftop? This is an excellent question. So we're looking for a roof that faces south, east or west is okay, or a combination of those like southeast, southwest. So this house in the middle, that's a direct south roof. Now it is a triangular shape. So it might be limited on how many solar panels we can fit and depending on how many we need for this pool. So I, we might have to use a side roof as well, which is fine. We could use multiple roofs, but um, we wanna make sure also it's a very good sun, which this roof is excellent. Now here's a similar house, but you'll notice we got two rooftops here that are shaded. Obviously we can't use those, but we can use the side roof, which is a Southeast roof. So sometimes by the way, you can take out a palm tree, you could trim some branches. So the more sun, the better. And here's what, again, a solar pool heater system installed. As you can see, they're very aesthetically pleasing. We've done these on some very expensive houses and HOA houses. So no worries there, everything looks great. So again, I'm Solar by Green Greg. If you found this helpful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. We cover solar advice, solar insider secrets, stuff that nobody else will tell you, troubleshooting for homeowners, and energy efficiency. Thank you so much and have an excellent sunny day. Bye-bye.